I've been feeling so, I've been feeling so down. What is up everyone? My name is Andrew. If you don't know me, you should subscribe because like, why not? Um, but anyway, today I am filming a writing video. I think this is my first ever writing video, so it's going to be a little bit different than the other videos on my channel. I have been wanting recently to get into more of authortube rather than booktube because I do watch a lot of writers on YouTube and I am a writer myself. So this video is going to be all about my nano preparations, which I actually started the last week of October. Um, and today is November 2nd, so we are on day two of NaNo. I plan on doing weekly NaNo updates. Um, I'm not gonna vlog because I do very bad at vlogging when I'm writing. I feel a sense of accomplishment whenever I know other people are seeing that I have written, and then it makes me feel like I don't need to write anymore. I don't know, it's like a psychological thing that is not good. I hate that about me, hate that for me, but it happens. So I'm not gonna vlog, but I will update at the end of every week. In this video, I do just wanna go ahead and share how I prep for NaNo and how I start a story. So if that is something that you want to learn more about or see somebody else's process of, stick around, I will share with you guys what I did to prep for NaNo and maybe you will find some tips that will help you as you prep for your new writing processes. Not me putting on my glasses that I only use whenever I'm writing on my computer. But, okay, I did want to like look at my computer and look at what I have written and everything to be able to share with you guys. But first off, let me tell you guys a little bit about my nano project for this year. So I decided that I wanted to start a new work in progress. So I got this idea a few months back about a city, a town, a kingdom at the edge of the world, the very edge of the world where if you take a jump from this edge, you will be rid of all of your fears because this edge has this power and it takes away all of your fears so you become a fearless person after you take the jump. And so that was my premise and I thought it was really interesting to dive in and see what human beings are like when they have no fear. I think this stems from a lot of different things in my life. I tend to put things that are going on in my life into my writing or use writing as a coping mechanism. And I think fear and overcoming fear has been something that I have always dealt with growing up. So this is something that I feel like has subconsciously been brewing in my head, but I'm excited to dive into it and really explore what being fearless means and especially to my characters. I did not write a full on outline for this one, which is surprising because for most of my writings, I do write full on like 10 page outlines, but I didn't do that for this one. And I just felt like I knew a lot and I didn't need to do an outline. But the first thing that I did do was start off with some brainstorming. So I have this like leather journal that I do a lot of my writing prep in for different stories. So I started off with just a very basic brainstorming page. And as you can see, I just started with the setting and what the daytime and nighttime would look like in this setting. And I also had the two towns, which I in this one called the inland town and the coastal town because at this point I did not have even the town names. So that was, you know, um, a work in progress still. But and then I just wrote my main characters that I knew would be living in which town and which would pertain to the setting. I always am pretty much just talking to myself through my writing like I just wrote the question what does the edge take away so that's what I had to ponder and figure out so then I have a running list of names that I like that I would um, save for future characters that I find on Pinterest or that I come up with in my head just certain things that do not always come to me immediately um, also play around with different spellings of names and all that jazz. I also like to start a running glossary or whatever. So I have a words section to start off a list of different words that will pertain to the story, whether that be made up words or not. Then I also created a town names list and finally came up with the names. And I do all of this in an order that I just, this is literally how my brain processes. I go from one thing to the other and it helps me lead into the next thing. But then I have a section for working parts of my story. So I knew kind of big plot points of the story that I needed to write down before I forgot. These aren't all of them, but I just wrote down any big things that I knew would need to be addressed during throughout the entire story or any big events. This can be anything in your story from a place to an event to a big reveal, just 
big points that you would want to jot down and then I wrote those first and then I proceeded to write um, little dashes with what would be included in these scenes or whatever um, and I went from there and that really helped me flesh out the story and made me realize okay I need to go and write some background for this I need some history for this like it there needs to be methods to all of this and I need to know a lot about the background and the world building of my own story I also made a nano prep list um, basic things that I wanted to do was like update my nano web page, create Pinterest board, write any history and background, create running glossary, come up with kingdom names, and create writing plan which was a writing schedule. As you can see I did do all the things which I was pretty proud of um, and then I also had a characters section and I wrote down all of the characters, the main characters, that I knew would be in there and tried to go ahead and flesh them out. I do recommend not always just getting those templates online um that have like your character's name and their eye color and their skin color and what is their favorite food and what do they like to do in their free time like those things are important and i feel like they will come naturally but there are more important things that you need to know as in what does your character want and how far will they go to get it what are they going to do to get it and what is going to be their call to action um to move the plot along those are things that i like and that I prefer to figure out because if I know those things then I kind of have an idea where the story is going. None of this will really make sense and I will probably block out a bit but I don't mind sharing my character names um, with you guys because I trust that you won't steal them but also there are plenty of books I'm sure maybe some of these names are in other books already um, that I just don't know about so I did just have quite a few different bullet points depending how important one character is and I just started anywhere honestly like um, the first person I wrote here, as you can see, her name is Safia, and she is not even like one of the main main characters. She might get a POV, but she is not somebody that I'm going to introduce early on in the story. So I really just start anywhere that I am inspired. And when I get an idea, I write it down. When I get a line in my head, I write it in my notes app on my phone. I just need to have somewhere to put these ideas because I will forget. Um, but yeah, then I have Asa, who is more of a giant main character. He's literally the fearless king. He's the bad guy. Um, so I have quite a few things for him planned. Then I have Belamine, who is the um, kind of rival court of the fearless king. Uh, she is the princess of Anselm. Then I have Anwen, who is a character that I completely thought of as I was doing nano prep. She is this poor peasant girl who really only cares about feeding her family and nothing else. She has no morals. She will do what she has to do um, and she doesn't care about the repercussions as long as her little siblings and her twin brother are fed and her parents have their medication to go on living um, as long as they can. She will do what she has to do and I think it's really cool that this character came to me because she was nowhere in the early pro in the early thoughts of this story she was nowhere she just became into existence and I think that's really cool. Then I have Ashbel who is a brother to another character who does play a central part so he has you know quite a few bullet points. Then I have Cairo um, again one of the minor characters but still I a lot of his backstory came to me so I had to write it down and then I just made my writing schedule so I just put 30 boxes Sunday Monday Tuesday all the way to Saturday and put my goal 2,000 words a day that leaves me room to miss five days and every day that I complete my goal I will mark in or highlight in and fill the box and I like this it's very simple I can keep track of it easy um, I've tried to do pie charts and line graphs before and it's just too much. I don't want to do that. I'm just going to do if I hit 2000, I'm going to fill up the whole box. Like I don't, I don't want to um, have to deal with the exact numbers. I will let Nano track that process on the NaNoWriMo website. But that is how I started my story and yesterday was the first day of Nano and I wrote 2,090 words so I even went over a little bit of my goal and then one other thing that I wanted to share is that I did create a document for background of the story for a pretty important um, history of the town because writing other documents as if it was part of the story really helps me um, sort out the history for myself so I just titled this fearless background the date and went to writing 
and I ended up writing about 850 words, three pages of background that I can reference when I need to, make sure there are not any continuity errors whenever I forget anything. I think that was a pretty important thing to do before I started my story. So that is how I prepped for NaNo. That is how my progress is going so far. I will have an update probably on Sunday. Um, I'd be incredibly interested to know if you are doing NaNo, if you have anything to share with me or any tips for prepping or working through a story without outlining because I've never done that before but I decided to go ahead and pants it this year and we'll see how far that gets me. Um, but my goal is to reach 50,000 words by November 30th so we'll see how that goes. If you are doing NaNo, good luck to you. I have faith and hope that we will all reach our goals and do good and just get by it one word at a time but that's pretty much all I have to say for this video so I will see you guys in the next she said a favorite color yellow. It look good on her dress trying to be slim thick nothing less but she's falling in and out